well, yeah, so we're going to move on to our final topic. Um, basically, what everyone has been talking about. What When they come out last Thursday? It's been about Wednesday? a week. Yeah, it's about right a at a week. So, again, there will be no spoilers when talking about God of War Ragnarok here. Well, no final ending spoilers, because me and Phoenix haven't gotten there. But we did want to at least put our general impressions of everything up until maybe the last two or three hours. But, uh, yeah, Phoenix, we'll let, I'll let you go ahead and start. What, what, what are you thinking so far? How are you enjoying it? Um, I am enjoying it. Um, I feel like I kind of need to lay groundwork and kind of my feelings about new God of War. Um, I will say, and I think I already said it, if you had any doubt that this was going to be a good game, you shouldn't need to worry about that. This is an excellent yeah. game. I just about every metric you could measure a game by. Graphics are excellent. Narrative is excellent. Like Everything about this is quality through well, and through. I mentioned it previously. Santa Monica makes quality. They make quality games. Yeah. Yeah. So don't let that be a concern that, oh, this is somehow going to be a dud by Santa Monica, because it's not. Now, does that mean you're going to love this game? I think it's going to depend on how much you like God of War 2018, because for better or for worse, this is God of War 2018, just more of it. Um, and that's something I've heard kind of reiterated, and you really feel it as you play the game. This doesn't feel like a sequel. This is a just direct continuation like i could have imagined like finishing you know the ending of god of war 2018 and just immediately start this game i mean i'm sure there are changes like some gameplay um loops have probably been adjusted you know combat's been tweaked some but this is the same game through and through from a narrative perspective even graphical fidelity it looks the same the art direction of course hasn't changed at all between it uh, and none of that's necessarily a bad thing if you loved god of war 2018 you're really going to love graphically, Ragnarok. Graphically, I feel like it looks a touch better, but man, it well, is it's, hard to tell. It's better. Okay, so technically yeah. it's better. It's the next generation. If you're playing on PS5 with all the bell and whistles, of course it's better. But when you look at these games from an art direction standpoint, and you also think that God of War 2018 was not a bad looking game, and it just got re-released on PC with extra bells and whistles. So comparing those two games now, they both look incredible so you know i think there's pretty uh, well uh, good consistency between the graphical fidelity between both of them um mm -hmm. my point being is it really is going to depend how much you love 2018 um and i'll tell you i i enjoyed god of war 2018 i was not in the camp of this is a masterpiece game back in the day i mean i, I don't know how you felt about it. i think you talked a little bit about it when you finished 2018 like how did you feel about the newest I, god of war i felt like it was a really good Amazing. I loved it. I just felt like it, like, I remember seeing a lot of the discourse around it was that it was the best God of War game. I still say it was, it is not. I think, I think God of War 3, in my opinion, is still the best God of War game, in my opinion, granted. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I, I would say so far with this game, it, I would say I, this game is making me like 2018 a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, That's fair. I feel like I feel like this one's still fun. It's still really good, but I will say, other, other unlike the previous one, this game is starting to run me a little to the point where I'm like, all right, you know, I'm me and you are what about twenty hours in already, and it's yeah, like, at the thirty mark. At the thirty mark? How are you at thirty? I'm at like twenty two. I did a lot of side quests up at the oh, beginning. Oh, I see. Okay, I'm at the point where I'm like. Okay, I kind of get it. To be know. fair, oh. I think we were both trying to rush it, so we're probably feeling that, hey, we're, we both were trying to finish this game prior to this podcast and just couldn't do it. There's too much game here if you're trying to rush right. through it. Before I continue, I just wanted to add in, I missed Lencho in chat. He did say, uh, when it came to the Game Awards, he just wanted to say, I've never heard of it. Where do they put the Game Awards? Basically, whenever it comes around, it is on YouTube. It's a lot of streaming. Back in the day, it was mainly on like Spike TV and G4. Mm. Um, but yeah, base just look online. No more G4. It comes around. No more G4. Yeah, they went. Flop. They went bye bye for the second or third time. <laughs> um, before we go too deep into the new game, um, I do want to just backtrack for a minute. I don't think I really um, gave my rationale for why I didn't love 2018 oh. as much. Um, Can I just throw in Lencho's yes. last? Oh, of course. Oh, I'm sorry. His last Last comment was that he just said when it came to the Game Award talk, he just said, I really enjoyed Forza's latest Horizon, which oh, yeah, Forza Horizon really like that, really but good. I think that was from last year. It was. They did put out the Hot Wheels DLC this year, though, so I think it oh, yeah, yeah. might make it kind of fresh. Um, okay, anyways, sorry, yeah. um, so just to kind of reframe, the reason I didn't love 2018 as much, and I'm sure it's a lot of nostalgia bias, I'm kind of in the same camp with you, that original trilogy, like that style of God of War game, 
is kind of what I grew up with. And I didn't play as much of two and three. I played a lot of one though. Like I probably played God of War one, like four or five times. So that super fast, brisk combat, the pace of how you just kind of run through these environments and you're attacking stuff left and right. almost like a devil may cry kind of game to me. That was always God of war. So when I got to 2018, the pacing just like tanked, uh, because for one, it's a I feel like that's even, that's even worse in this game. I disagree. I I disagree with that. I think this game's far slower. Oh, I don't think so. But I'll come back to that. Um, yeah. Point being is like 2018 dropped. First, I felt it not just like the narrative. I knew that was going to slow down because the way they're kind of interacting with, you know, Atreus and him to kind of have their father-son bonding moments. But the gameplay, like the combat was so much slower in the original God of War. Like, I like the axe. The axe is a lot of fun, but it is slow and it's very deliberate. It's very... Um, and granted, that's I'm not saying that's a bad design decision. Like it has this a very different feel. But I was very conflicted with that for a long time with that game because yeah. I wanted it faster. Um, Once you get the blades in 2018, you're like, okay. They, they came too late through. though for me, and that was kind yeah. of my problem. Like, by the time the blades came out, I had already kind of relegated to how I need to play the game with the axe, and I didn't. I already wasn't enjoying the combat as much because of that. Granted, that's on me. That's probably just a once again nostalgia bias and me not giving it a fair shake back then. And although when the blades came, that was nice. It was kind of like a throwback to the original game. They didn't really feel like the original Blades of Chaos. You know, they were a little off. They weren't quite as quick. You saw that, you know, really tight camera, which made it awkward. And I feel like they just came too late. I was already kind of locked into how I was going to play that game. This game, Ragnarok, I feel like does a much better job because instead of waiting to give you that faster combat option, you, get, you start yeah. with it. Like you have the option right at the beginning. You can, you have the axe. But then you also have the blades. So you have time to really spend with the blades early on to kind of get used to that quick move set. And then you feel like you have an option. It's not that you're stuck with a slower combat choice with the axe. You get to choose depending on the combat encounter. Do I want to be really fast with the blades? Do I want to mix it with the axe for a couple of enemies and go back and forth? And I thought that really helped pick up the pacing of the combat in this game. Maybe enjoy it a lot more. Perhaps. I mean, I, me personally, I still really like, or sorry, gamer, no. feel free to you know, budge in if you want. <laughs> but um, I still really enjoy the fact that, like, you, you know, when you do get the axe, or the axe, when you do get the blades in the in 2018, it very much is that, you know, it symbolizes that whole Kratos having to revert to his previous ways, which I it like that. It was a cool thematic, moment. Thematically. Yes. Yeah. And I'll tell you, that's, that was what I, I did really enjoy about 2018. Like, the combat for me felt a little flat, which also kind of discouraged me from wanting to do all of the side quests. But the narrative was great. Like the, the like the themes that they were kind of playing on and like the moments they would build up, like where they built to that moment where they reveal the Blades of Chaos. Like that's what pulled me through God of War 2018 was the narrative and thematic choices. Um, this game, though, not only do I think does a really good job from a narrative standpoint, but in this game, the gameplay is actually kind of hooked me in finally. So I'm enjoying it much more. Um, I know you're going to talk about it too, but the other thing that's helped me kind of appreciate or have a speedier gameplay option, the Atreyu sections, which I know you're going to have some negative things to say about some of it, but the combat when you play as Atreus... Honestly, I almost like it more than when you play as Kratos. Like, it's so quick. Like, the parrying mechanic is so much better. Like, I always found it super annoying to have to parry with the axe because you have to be super deliberate. Like, if you're not planning for your parry, you're going to miss it and get your butt kicked. Um, yeah. But with a tray, it's like, I could just, like, really reactionary, just kind of press that block button. I could press, like, twice and be able to parry things quicker than I ever could with the axe. So, I like those faster combat options. That's just me, I, personally, but that helped. I, I agree. I, I, I actually... I actually, when it comes to his mechanics, when it comes to his gameplay, I actually think it's pretty fun to play as Atreus. Like that is the pos- that is the positive when it comes to him. My still problems with the Atreus sections and the game as a whole is just like I just don't think he's that interesting of a character, and I don't want to say he's not that interesting, but Kratos he's to me overly... is a far. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm cutting you off. No, you're right. He's overly dramatized and I he's feel overly like that's naive. Fine. He's really hard to relate to, is my problem with them. Um, yes. And granted, because he's a kid, he's supposed to be naive, but it's coming down to like a fault almost where you're like, come on, kid. Like, I, I, I don't want to go into a lot of spoilers, but there's decisions that Atreus makes that you're just like, really? Even if he's a 13 year old kid, considering who he's been raised by and everything going on, like, these are just dumb decisions and nobody it's around. Like, come- Coming off of 2018, you're like, you would think you would know. You would know better, yeah. Know better after 
all that. Just He's like you know, a hopeful um, uh, optimist with everything. And that's not the world that they've set up in either of these two games. This is a pretty brutal, um, sometimes you know, hopeless kind of situation you're in a lot of these mm-hmm. um, um uh, scenario so i mean it's nice that he's upbeat but it also doesn't play well in my opinion like he is too naive i think to really rally behind maybe that was a conscious decision they want you to have some kind of conflict there but i feel like they wanted you to kind of relate to trey in some of those sections and i don't always do so just because of the way he's kind and of interacting and it's not even ultimately his final decision to go join Odin and so spoilers again. Man, you just like said no spoilers and you just freaking jumped to the biggest spoiler, well, man. Well, ruin. I didn't mean. I Sorry, didn't mean everybody. That. Sorry, um, uh, Lincho. <laughs> we just ruined God of oh, War for you. Well, he's Lincho's been watching my stream. He he knows. Oh. But um, yeah. It, I, I wanted to bring that up because like I felt like that aspect of the plot is understandable. Like when. When he under when he finds out you know about what's Kratos's fate and 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 when he wants to try and turn all of that it makes sense he'd be willing to go through certain lengths but there are other decisions he makes though that are like why like I I don't know you get what I'm saying I do There's other I don't know beyond that and without getting too deep into any of it it's hard to really you know overly rationalize why I don't agree with some of his choices but I think they're pretty dumb even like I think mm-hmm. a, a kid. Nowadays, I think would look at this situation, wouldn't make the decisions he's making for whatever reason. So. And this game, when it comes to the whole like people keeping secrets from one another trope, it's like, dude, you have been going on this trope for so mm-hmm. long. Have these have these characters still not figured out that keeping secrets from one another? Yeah, is, they're a little contrived just for plot convenience sake. It feels like sometimes it's beyond so. contrived. It's like they they they. they Every chapter is like that, where, like, there's some... It's like, I, I need to be open with the Atreus. Where did you go, boy? And, like, they're just constantly people talking mm-hmm. about secrets and stuff, and I don't know. It, and to be fair, I mean, this is getting a little nitpicky. Like, I don't want any of this to come across like, you know, the game is poorly written or the narrative is bad, because it's not. Um, I just think, in general, there are some, you know, decisions these characters are making that makes it a little hard to relate to them sometimes for XYZ reason. And they almost... I feel like they try and play off of the whole uh, he's Loki, therefore he's mischief. He's the god of mischievous or mischief, mischievous. I don't feel like he's really mischievous. Trickery. He's just disobedient. I, <laughs> no, I I agree. I'm saying, but I feel like that's like they would be their explanation as to why he keeps so many secrets and stuff. It's like, well, no, because no, that's not his rationale for why he's keeping the secrets. He's doing them because he's trying to be loyal to characters he's met and stuff like that. Like. I don't know. I think my problem is like um, Atreus takes everything he does just at face value. There's like no thought put into what could be happening. Like the way he trusts Odin towards the end of it. And he, he argues that he wasn't really that trusting, but come on. Mm-hmm. He was like just, he was all in for a little while with stuff. Oh, um, yeah. And I find that just annoying that he doesn't take all this context into account and be like, well, this is probably a little awkward. Maybe I shouldn't be, you know, following through with this the way I am. I don't know. It's like, well, all you've been doing for two games now is sitting on a boat with Mimir, listening to Mimir tell every single story about how this god, Odin, has killed everyone you know, and you still are willing to, like, join him and try and help him solve even just one or two secrets? It's like, come on. Like, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, well, his whole thought is like, oh, well, Atreus, he thinks he's smart enough that he's not, he can pull one over on Odin, which is just like the most naive thing. Maybe a 13 year old really would think that, that he's going to be smarter than, you know, the all father of the Norse realms. But um, I don't, to me, it just comes across pretty disingenuous, but. Yeah, I, I honestly, I feel like when it comes to the mechanics and how the game operates, again, it, it's very similar to 2018. I don't think it's necessary to like, I mean, it. I feel like they add some mechanics, especially when it comes to, like, the spear and stuff that you kind of get later mm. in the game. But for the most part, a lot of the stuff is similar. You know, how you kind of, like, discovering certain things and enemy types. I mean, it's all 
Yeah, this game is the. I don't want to say it's the same as 2018 because there are differences, but the gameplay loop is essentially the same. The way you explore, the pacing of the narrative, where it kind of brings you down to those slow moments where you're either in a boat or a sled, just talking to the other character to branch off on these little hub worlds to do a small little explorative puzzle. Like, it's the exact same gameplay loop you had in 2018. So, if you're coming into this game expecting something completely different, you're not going to get that here. But I don't think you really should be. Like, honestly, I think this is the better game thus far. I mean, I haven't beaten it up to the, uh, the very ending kind of narrative standpoint, but everything I've played about this game so far, I have enjoyed more than God of War 2018. Part of that's the combat. Um, part of it, too, is I am really digging just what they're doing with certain characters in this game. Like, the last game was a much smaller story. It was really just about Atreus and Kratos. But I love the way they um, represent, like, Thor and Odin in this game. Like, they're such cool representations of these characters and so different. Um, and it's really kind of helped me reframe, like, how I look at, like, Norse mythology. Like, we know Thor and Loki from, like, MCU and, like, classic Norse mythology. And then you see him here, and it's a completely different uh, relationship and behavior, which is really cool. That's that unique uh, way they've kind of taken that mythology um, and represented it here. So I want to ask Gamer a question. So, Gamer, how many how many God of War games have you played? Only like a, like two, not even. Do you like, like the one and a half? Do you, do you like the Kratos character in the game? I do. I okay. Do. So right, that's why I'm like I'm really intrigued. I'm like, man, now I want to play it. <laughs> well, so like I with, love that fast action well, nonsense. One of the one of the big draws with uh, the suspense in this game is that at the end of 2018, they learn a prophecy about Kratos. Um, again, if, if this is all spoilers, I don't want to spoil. Are you okay? With me continuing I on with some of the prophecies. Care. When I play it, okay. I'll be like, whoa, that's cool. But, um, yeah. One of the one of the prophecies that that uh, he and the boy learn. Um, is that Boy. is that Kratos is going to die, and sure. so far well, again we haven't finished the game, but so far everything is looking like it's going to follow the prophecy. And I just wanted to ask, like, would you be interested in God of War twenty twenty five if it has Kratos dead and you play as Atreus? Well, it depends on like the direction that they're taking Boy, pretty much like yeah, like. Like Kratos is like one of those characters. Is like, yo, this guy's a boss. Like he's yeah. he's destroyed like everything. He's so freaking cool, you know. Like it's, it's different. It's a completely different like persona as opposed to the kid. Because I just it's just like different. I just feel like for me, I kind, of, yeah, I kind of would like to see where they go. But I would just say for me, I don't want to play as a trace. I. I feel like it's a personality thing. Like I enjoy Kratos. I played with him for what four games now, and I don't know. What do you think, Phoenix? Um, I don't think that's the direction they're taking this game. I know that's what you're concerned about. I don't think they're. I mean, I'm not saying they won't kill off Kratos in this game, but they killed him how many times now? <laughs> I mean, for three times. Yeah. So even if they kill him in this game, you think he's really going to not be a part in the next God of War? I don't well, think the, so. I mean, well, they the might do that theme, whole, uh, you know, pull the wool over your eye kind of thing. Maybe he's dead in this game. You, they start whatever the next God of War is with Atreus. You give it a third of the game, and Kratos is resurrected, and you're playing as him again. So I don't right. see them ripping Kratos out of God of War. Yeah. Well, because a big aspect of this game, like a big thing, is the whole idea of gamer of, of, the, of this game in particular. A major theme is the whole idea of prophecy, and mm -hmm. and you and you know, does that control? Does that control you or can you determine your own destiny and stuff and that's why the boy runs away and certain things but um i don't know maybe it could be interesting at the end i'm sure that's where they're gonna go is that you know kratos somehow against prophecy is able to control his destiny or something and prevent his own death or something i'm, I'm guessing that's important where it's gonna go i don't i really don't think this game is gonna end with kratos being dead i i mean i I could be wrong. I mean, I've been wrong plenty of times. Um, for part of it is, and I don't know how this game is going to like end to end, but if it's anything like the last God of War game, you go through the main narrative, and then you can go around and clean up side content, right? And that's how these games have typically, typically been structured. I don't think you could be able to go back and do certain side content without Kratos. 
unless they do some weird time skip and all of a sudden Atreus has the exact same capabilities that Kratos has for exploration. Like, oh, uh, that's true. I didn't even think about it. The game like Atreus doesn't use the spear. In. He doesn't have the chains. And all those are not just combat mechanics. They're also exploration mechanics. It's how you unlock certain air, um, areas. You have to use your uh, chains to pull a block out of the way. You have to use a spear to go ahead and climb something. Atreus doesn't have that. So well, unless remember, they... Hmm? No, I was going to say, remember also... A uh, big thing that they're playing around with is uh, different realms and portals at the end of this game. Mm -hmm. So Kratos may very well die, and uh, Atreus portals his way to an to a time frame or something where where Kratos is alive. I, they could also do that because you know well, they haven't really solved. done time. Well, I guess they uh, they've talked about it. Like Thor went back in time, and uh, what was it? He killed some beast during Ragnarok before Ragnarok mm -hmm. ever happened, or something. Oh, no, 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 during uh, God of War 2, all of the, um, when he kills the fates in God of War 2. Yeah, no, I'm uh, talking about a specific instance they talked about in this game, about Thor going back in time as a piece of lore during Ragnarok. Oh, uh, It was a throwaway uh, lore line. I don't remember I was, exactly that's what, what I was. meant. Time is not a new thing when it comes to God of War. Like, the whole yeah. fate, God of War 2 is all about, like, you fighting against prophecy and fate mm -hmm. and all that. I've, I actually really like that. They actually referenced God of War 2 a lot because of that aspect with this yeah. game. Like, when you uh, go and talk to the Fates in this game, they're constantly referencing, like, stuff you did in God of War 2. I just don't time. think they're going to kill off Kratos. At least not mm -hmm. permanently. Here's the thing. Like, certain games, you can do that. You can get away from the main character. Like, even like Mass Effect we were talking about. You could not have Shepard. You could argue it's better to keep him, but you don't have to have Shepard to technically have a Mass Effect game. Can you have a God of War game without the God of War? Like, Atreus is never going to be the God of War. Uh, I don't think that even, like, from a mythological standpoint, they would tie they in well. They haven't made him power-wise. They haven't made it seem as though he has any sort of, like... Like, like he is a strong character, but he's not... I mean, he's still a kid. I mean, they could argue. I mean, he hits adulthood and he bulks up and he starts looking like Kratos. I don't know. But he doesn't... He's just not the God of War. Like, I feel like for you to have a God of War game... You gotta have a character who embodies the god of war. If it's not Kratos, who's that gonna be? And here's the thing: Kratos is also like just this iconic character. Like, mm -hmm. as I said, there are franchises that can get away from having a certain main character, but not God of War. I feel like for you to have a God of War game, you gotta have Kratos in there. Otherwise, it's not a God of War game because God of War is not just a title. That is Kratos to me. So I don't know. I think they will eventually whenever, uh, you know, they get past this, you know, saga, which I think it ends with Ragnarok. They're not doing a third game in this. They'll reinvent the God of War series another way. Like it will be another reboot style thing more than anything else. But I don't see Kratos being gone from this forever. But I'll find I out. Agree. I'm going to play the game after we finish this podcast. So I'll text you and let you know what oh, happens. No, <laughs> I, I, five o'clock in the morning. I stayed up till 4 a.m. last night trying to finish this stupid game, man. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'll finish it tomorrow night. I, I gotta go to bed. But um, yeah. yeah. I mean, overall, so so you're enjoying it more than 2018. You said because I'm enjoying it just a touch less. It really the combat's what shifted it for me. I, like the combat turned me off in the first game. Not that it was bad. A lot of people love the combat in the last game, 2018, and I totally get that. For me, I was a little just opposed to it just because I think of what I was expecting. So expectation bias, or however you want to look at it. This game just appealed to me a little more. It gave me more flexibility with the combat. It felt faster, which encouraged me to want to explore more. Um, I actually was more intrigued with going around trying to find little chests and whatnot. Um, I will say that's actually somewhat of another nitpick with me just in general with these God of War games. And I think you may have mentioned this. I can't recall. I don't feel like where they go as far as like the resource collecting and the crafting is worth it in these games. I don't think it's worth it at all. I don't like, think it's fun. It's another layer to it that very rarely do I enjoy. Like, I like unlocking armor from an aesthetic pers uh, purpose. And it's cool if, like, you know, you pick a piece of armor that just has, like, a bonus effect. Like, you can do something quicker. You can, you have an extra, you know, boon to whatever weapon you have. But this is really just, like, a stat-boosting crafting system where it's about, mm -hmm. oh, I've got plus three cooldown on my, uh, my greaves and... I don't know. I don't feel like that's needed in this God of War game because what it leads to then when you're doing exploration and you're trying to find, um, you know, treasures and whatnot, ha more than half of the treasure chest you open is just the resource you need to upgrade your gear. So hack silver or whatever it is. Um, and then there's, of course, chests that are more beneficial that give you like a new weapon upgrade or something like that. But those are fewer and further between. 
and I don't know that to me that actually brings down the exploration, at least the benefit of exploration, especially as you progress further in the game. Because after you've gotten to a certain point, you've got plenty of resources. You don't need to go exploring to have more hack silver or whatever to upgrade your gear. You've got plenty of it by the time you reach the halfway uh, point. So then, why explore? Like it kind of removes part of the incentive to go out because you're just going to find more hacks over that now you don't really even need I've, that much. I thought that ever since 2018. I remember when yeah. we talked about 2018, I never, I was like, it's and, fine, but I don't, it's like Gotham Knights. It's like, why is this in, I don't, it's more of noticeable in Gotham Knights, but I mean, like for me, it's just like, I just don't think it's necessary to mm -hmm. be here. I, I agree. I think that's not, uh, the other thing about 2018 that I think it hurt it for me. Like the gameplay didn't encourage me to go out in these extra little side combat missions. And then the stuff I would even earn from doing those side missions didn't seem all that beneficial. This game, at least the combat is more intriguing or enjoyable for me. So that's helped me kind of in, uh, engage with the exploration more. But even at that, the exploration, I think could be, I don't know, adjusted. So it wasn't all built around this crafting I, currency. I I wonder if a doubt, if a something that's hurting my opinion of this game is the fact that I played 18 so not that long ago. Mm -hmm. Like I played 18 what like a month ago. Yeah. Whereas most people probably waited what what was it like a year and a half, two years. It's been at least two years since I played it. I remember I played through all of these games mm -hmm. within like two months. So. And that's I what know. I was saying. Like this game, I'm sure feels just like a continuation of the last game. It does. Oh, so yeah. I'm sure you're already feeling a little kind of weary from God of Wars in general. So this is just more of that, which, for better or for worse, that may not be what you were looking for at this point. I don't know. I still think my biggest gripe is just with a lot of the the narrative. Like not that it's bad. It's just I don't feel like they focused in on certain things that I would like for them to have focused in on more. Like what? Like where would you know, want like, the narrative to go? I'm, that, like, I'm curious. Like, I, I like for the most part where the narrative is going. I don't agree with every character decision, but I've liked the narrative. I was kind of hoping more. I was kind of hoping more like like again, kind of heading back on the fact that I don't really the Trace character you were saying is kind of um, what was the word you used? Oh shoot, I forgot. He overly naive, naive, overly naive, and. Um, just he makes kind of dumb decisions sometimes. I feel like I would have preferred he had gotten taken against his will, and then you just have to like go full on Kratos. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm guessing maybe I mean, we haven't finished the game, so maybe they're still leading up to that. You have I a couple have... of moments that will shift that. I will say because I'm like two chapters ahead of you, and it does give you some of that. Um, so I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's hopeful to hear. That whole time, not. that whole time that Atreus was in in. Asgard, I was like tentatively on stream. I'm like, uh oh, it's going that way. Kratos has got a mount war by himself on on Asgard. Now granted, maybe that's unrealistic, but dude, he was doing that in God of War Three. Mm -hmm. Like he was just running up in there. <laughs> um I I also have to mention that. I saw me getting mad at some rando on Twitter, but uh basically here, but I saw somebody on Twitter said that uh God of War Ragnarok had the best opening for a video game ever, or the craziest opening, and I'm like, like, dude, did you play God of War 3? Like, that game starts off with you on the back of Gaia and the Titans ascending, uh, as ascending, you know, trying to get, heading towards Zeus and, like, four other gods. Like that. I'll be honest. Oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was gonna say, I've honestly forgotten how this one started. I know there was a sled chase at the beginning. Is that what they're talking about? I'm, well, I'm assuming they're taking into account the Thor battle, but you don't fight oh. Thor until an hour into the game. Yeah, right? I didn't really look at that as the intro. I mean, no, it's within I guess I the saw, intro chapters, but I just thought it was like these. A lot of these PlayStation fans, they have like oh, careful, I'm not just watch, fan, not just them. Watch not what just you them. say. You're gonna start some wars, Chaz. <laughs> not, not just them. People on both sides. People have very, very quick recency bias, and it's like. It's like, dude, you, the game came out four days ago and it already has the greatest opening to a game you've ever played. It's like, I feel like there's a lot of hyperbole and whatnot. Like, people are overly hyped about this, and the game does deliver in a lot of ways. But I have been hearing a lot of people say this is their favorite game ever. And I'm just like, really? Like, it's it was a like good. That. Go ahead. It was like that with Breath of the Wild. It's like, dude, I really Breath enjoyed of Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild, I think, it... could deserve it, though, because there's. There's more to Breath of the Wild than I'm just like a off narrative. I'm God of War fans and Zelda fans. <laughs> 
I don't know. I mean, I can understand. I mean, okay. So to be fair, all this is, you know, based upon someone's personal preference and perspective. It's all subjective. So, I mean, if this mm -hmm. is your game of your lifetime, the best game ever made, perfectly fine. I'm not going to come and, you know, argue with you over that point, but I think it's hard to make that decision. I think you're right. There's a lot of recency bias and there's a lot of hype around this game. And to be fair, this game does deliver. So I think you have well, that fun. satisfaction and it does keep you going. But I think over time, people are going to, I think, get a little more neutered or a little more subdued on their feelings about this and in, in general. I think there's going to be a lot more favor too, I think, brought up with God of, 20, uh, God of War 2018. I think a lot of people are going to start preferring that one over this one, but uh, we'll see. I, I will still say, like, I feel like the old style God of War games, more particular three, is more is is more crazy. It's a much larger scale. It's more grandiose. These games are better and more tightly strewn in my ter in terms of narrative and plot. I feel like they're totally different styled games. But like again, if you're that's why I was saying like if you're talking craziness, it's like dude, mm -hmm. God of War three is like ultimate craziness where you're like beating people's heads up over rocks and stuff yeah. it's like i think the uh, gameplay honestly at least for me is just more fun in those original three games um like i would play those old games for the gameplay any day over playing these new games however i think the narrative and the story in the new games are head and shoulders above anything yeah. we had in the old oh. games so mm -hmm. but that's one of those things like i will play this god of war game i will finish it i may never come back and play it again or if so it's gonna be I'm glad you brought that up because I don't I don't think these 2018 in this game due to the length for me are going to be games I replay for a very long time. Like God of War 3 is a game where like I can go up there like ten, under 10 hours all three of the You can beat them games. in a weekend. You've had your fun with it. It was fast paced and out of the gameplay loop just kind of is a quicker kind of um, adrenaline boost as you run through it. These games mm -hmm. drag, um, not oh, necessarily yeah. in a bad way. I mean, they're doing it to kind of set the pacing for these big narrative payoffs, but they're slower. They definitely bring things to a halt to have some cinematic moments or to set up a new character. And that's great mm -hmm. the first time when you're really trying to soak in all the story and all the narrative. But once you've done that, unless you just, this is your favorite story ever, it's going to feel old the second time and the third time. And more so the more often you play it. I will say my last thought, I did a very, again spoilers but um one of the last things i did was you have a battle with heimdall how mm -hmm. that kind of happens and go like i do really enjoy that whole um back and forth of like kratos trying to fight against his own nature trying yeah. to fight against his past and everything but ultimately it comes down to like you know he like he doesn't want to be the person he was before but ultimately his his abilities and his power is like only good for one thing like and, and it's sad because you know he's trying to fight against nature and be a good father and teach his son the right things but ultimately his strongest asset as a person is his power and it's like the way he like deals with heimdall where he's like you know you know what i mean you, you played that section but like i don't know i really enjoy that back and forth between you know again kratos is a great character i love his his personality and, and, and kind of what he tries to stand for, but he just, he can't, he can't get away from, you know, his past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Um, this is like curiosity, and you may have answered this question, but thus far, what was your favorite battle in the game so far? Like big set piece kind of battle moment. Of this game? Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the wolf battle. Okay, with, uh, I was curious if you got to that part. Yeah, I can't remember. The, the big wolf, wolf battle was the big wolf that was pretty fun that's probably my favorite um that was pretty great i will say i i feel like the big battles were slightly better in the in 2018 i don't feel like so they've had far. as many in this game like there was the oh i'm the, i don't remember the, the name serpent, the serpent the dragon serpent. thing yeah the big wolf and really beyond that you've had like a thor battle here and there you've had heimdall the heimdall yeah really is there anything else besides like some little mini boss characters no, I don't think like there's a lot of combat I mean, in this game, but there's not a lot of like big set piece combat moments. Which now I, I think like the it's kind of the wolf battle is probably the most entertaining. Yeah, I like the way that one ends. Uh, I won't spoil that one because that is a fun moment. Um, because it kind of brings a couple of things back in full circle. But um, that's a fun one. That's that's one of the highlights of the game so far. My low light is definitely that whole thing on giant 
playing it. I was thro- I was taken out of the game so we didn't talk much. About that. that forgot about that. Are you still whole... hanging in there, gamer? I know you haven't really said a whole lot. I know. I feel bad. <laughs> We're just, just about... listening. That's fair. Well, tell us to shut up if we're going too long. Last um, thing, we'll talk about Giant Planet real quick. Um, Jotunheim. I was Jotunheim. I was taken aback by everything going on there, and I felt like it went on way too long, man. That whole section was almost like two hours, where you're playing as a train alone. I don't know. On stream, I think it was like an hour and a half, two hours. It might have been. I didn't feel quite as negative again about it like you did. Uh, and granted, I think you have I a pretty... I forgot that was another battle, the giant lady. Oh, giant oh yeah. Grandma. See, I liked that giant battle. I mean, it was... I didn't I didn't like that battle. It was different. Like, it wasn't the same kind of battle, like the giant wolf battle, but it was different. I don't know. And I hadn't... I don't know. I enjoyed it well enough. Um, I don't know. I know you probably have the uh, more consensus opinion on that, that section. Most people, before I could tell, didn't like it. I didn't mind it too much, partially because I was very interested in that narrative. I wanted some payoff for who Loki was and his prophecy, and this was the first opportunity you had to kind of get any feedback or um, payoff from it. And you do. You get some of that. Uh, I do think it drags as far as you have to get on that stupid yak one too many times. The y'all or whatever I, I it was. Just, that whole section, I just felt I just felt dark, taken out of the game during that whole section. and I don't know. It just felt out of place. I mean, I understand some of that stuff is a part of um, Norse mythology, but it felt more like Grimm's, like Grimm's fairy tale, yeah. you know, with like, I don't know. I think what helped is that was the first chance I really got to play with Atreus a fair amount and kind of learn his moveset. And I really liked his kit. Like we already talked about it a little bit, but I have enjoyed playing as Atreus is um, his moveset. So uh, this gave me a lot of time to do that. Yeah. It has some slow pacing moments where you're just, it's just exposition going through a swamp on this yak. So yes, that's not the most exciting thing in the world, but I was down for it just to kind of have the moments where I could fight as uh, Atreus a few more times. Well, I just remembered one last thing. Just, uh, I thought Thor was Josh Brolin the whole time. And I looked it up. It is not Josh Brolin. I don't know. I just thought that voice actor was that. Oh, did I freeze? Yeah, your your video froze. Yeah. Ooh, can, oh, I, like, can I draw on your face? Hold on. <laughs> Do it. Hold on. I don't have Draw-ing a face. pin or something. Draw-ing face. Oh. Hurry before it moves. I don't have anything. Oh, no. I oh, wasn't shoot. prepped for this. Oh, where's my uh, my hat? So I can put a hat. Oh, now his face is gone. Oh, wah, wah. man. All right, well, uh, I'm, I'm welcome back here. to the Phoenix Man podcast. Um, <laughs> my 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 my, uh, my camera's been doing that for some reason. Oh, he's kind of back. Some of my screens it freezes. He's darkened up. Um, but shoot, what was I talking about just now? I totally forgot. Um, uh, Josh Brolin not being in this game. Josh, I thought it was Josh Brolin the whole time. Turns out it's not. The vo- I, uh, can, I can hear that. I can see where you get that from. Um, and did you notice Ellie? Ellie as the one dwarf lady? It was totally Ellie from t- t- from Lord, uh, Borderlands. Oh, the yeah. One, um, one black I it thought was totally- that. I mean, I wasn't sure if I was just, you know, thinking. I didn't, I didn't look it up, but to me it's just like. It's hard because a lot of people can do that same style of, you know. Hey there, what's going on? Kind of uh, southern country kind of deal. So I'm not sure if it was. I'm just gonna assume a... it was. I'm gonna assume it was. It could have been. Uh, I don't know. It might just be a very uh, convenient similarity, but I don't know. But the it voice should, acting has been really good. It's been really good. All right.